Welcome to Canadian Independent Media. It's August the 20th. My name is Jack Etkin. The media's job is to keep the corporations in power and to keep Canadians divided. Here in Victoria, the number one news talk station is CFAX, owned by Bell Media. Bell also owns the entire CTV network. If you watch CTV news, you only see the news Bell wants us to see. Bell also has about 30 cable TV stations, including Bravo, the Business News Network, Comedy Channel, TSN, HBO, Discovery, and much more. And Bell also owns some 55 radio stations in Canada. That's a lot of media to be owned and controlled by one corporation. The chairman of Bell Media, Mr. Gordon Nixon, used to be the president and CEO of the Royal Bank. So as the homeless roam our streets and the banks make record profits, the connection between these things is not mentioned by those who want to keep working for Bell Media. And if you want to work for Bell Media or any media in Canada, you will support corporate free trade, corporate tax cuts, war, and anything else that gives the corporation more power or more money. One of Canada's biggest problems is that eight or ten very large corporations own virtually every TV station, radio station, and newspaper in our country. This corporate ownership of so much media is not the free press that a democracy needs. You cannot have a democracy without a free press. This loss of our free media is one big reason why Canada is no longer a democracy. Ending the corporate control of our media and trying to get honest information is one of the most important things Canadians can do to build ourselves a better country. Next, Ed Johnson with a story on the link between Monsanto and autism. Thank you, Jack. American scientists are now finding a strong correlation between the rising rate of Roundup usage on corn and soy crops and an alarming rise in a number of different chronic autoimmune diseases such as multiple sclerosis and autism spectrum disorder. While correlation does not necessarily mean causation, causation becomes much more likely if a plausible mechanism can be found, as described in a recently published paper in the Journal of Biological Physics and Chemistry. The authors report that glyphosate, one of the active ingredients in Roundup, is found in several widely used vaccines. Viruses in vaccines are grown on animal tissue as a culture medium. The measles virus in particular is grown on gelatin made from the bones of commercially raised cows and pigs that have been fed a steady diet of Roundup Ready corn and soy feed. And not all children respond the same way to vaccines. The authors report that a key factor is an unhealthy gut microbiome which leads to a leaky gut barrier and subsequently a leaking brain barrier. Today, an unhealthy gut is recognized as a precursor to autism. The report goes on to describe the molecular pathway that glyphosate follows using amino acid transporters to damage the lining of the small intestine. So the takeaway from this is that a child given chronic exposure to high levels of dietary glyphosate can set him or her up for a severe adverse reaction to a vaccine. Their recommendation is to avoid foods containing glyphosate by selecting only USDA organically labeled food for your child. And they add this warning, we have been misled far too long by the claim that vaccines are safe and effective. For more information, the entire glyphosate article is referenced below. And as an aside for a first for BC, the new NDP government has created a new position for an organics industry specialist under the Ministry of Agriculture, headed by Lana Popham, an organic farmer herself. Let's hope that the overuse of toxic weed killers is also on her radar. And now, back to Jack. Thanks, Ed. Talks began on Wednesday, August the 16th, to renegotiate NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement. NAFTA is, I think, 
a deal that corporate Canada wants because NAFTA gives the corporations more power. NAFTA is all about making corporations stronger and citizens weaker in Canada, the US and Mexico. NAFTA is a very powerful agreement and most of us know very little about it. And what we do know is what we've been told by the corporate media, such as this story. The Globe and Mail, by the way, is owned by Canada's richest family and NAFTA is no doubt very good for them. Before free trade, we used to have something called the Auto Pact, which basically said that for every car we bought in Canada, one car had to be manufactured in Canada. So, Canada used to have a big auto industry with lots of high-paying jobs, which helped make Canada a prosperous nation. But under free trade, we lost that. And we lost tens of thousands of high-paying jobs in the auto industry. On the other hand, big business has done very well. And I think that's what NAFTA is really all about. So, Jack, where are we at now with NAFTA? Well, the NAFTA renegotiations have begun, but the question is, are Canada's negotiators working for the people of Canada, or are they working for the corporations of Canada? Personally, I don't trust Christia Freeland or Justin Trudeau for one second. I think they both work for corporate Canada. NAFTA is big, and we should all try to keep a close eye on what's happening. In an article published in August, Canadian scientist David Suzuki says the following, Wildfires are sweeping British Columbia, but it's not just BC. Thousands of people from here to California have fled their homes as fires rage. Greenland is experiencing the largest blaze ever recorded. Fires have spread throughout Europe. In June, dozens died in Portugal's worst fire ever. Meanwhile, from Saskatchewan to Vietnam to New Zealand, floods have brought landslides, death, and destruction. According to NASA, the Earth's temperature has risen by 1.1 degrees C since the 19th century, and 16 of the 17 warmest years ever recorded have occurred since 2001. Arctic ice has decreased in extent and thickness. Glaciers are retreating worldwide. Extreme weather events are becoming more common. Today's wildfires are a wake-up call. The fires are telling us we can't build more pipelines, we can't expand the tar sands, and we sure can't continue fracking. And really, we all have to change. We can't continue driving so much and using so much and wasting so much. We really have to slow down and live with more respect for the earth. It's all we've got. Do we really want to destroy it? So that's it for this week from Canadian Independent Media. For myself and Jack Etkin, thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing you next week.